Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the Vietnam War. And um, if you're following along in class, uh, hopefully you just read a little yesterday about the Vietnam War, kind of a um, introduction to it. And now we're going to look at it. What is Vietnam? Why was there a war? And how did that go? So let's jump into it. So to understand Vietnam War, you got to remember first off that we're talking about it in terms of the Cold War, that big kind of war between the United States and all of our friends in blue and the Soviet Union and all of their friends in red on the map. Uh, and during that time, we don't get along with each other, but we don't actually go to war directly with each other. Uh, and Vietnam, if you look where I'm moving my mouse right now, is this country right here. See, this is China, this big gray one here. And this is Vietnam right here. So if you take a closer look on this map here, this is what Vietnam looks like. See, here's China. Long, uh, skinny country, but um, very important because after World War II, Vietnam's going to get split into two sections, north and south. This should sound familiar because it's the same thing that happened in Korea, which we already talked about. And the north, the northern part becomes communist, um, and the southern is democratic, uh, as in they have a president who's supposed to be put in by election, and um, we support the south, obviously. So the problem is Vietnam before World War II wasn't a free country. It was actually controlled by France, who is one of our allies, our friends during World War II. And they want it back. And the um, North Vietnamese especially do not want to be taken back over by France. So France sends troops over there and they're trying to take it back over, but they're not going to have an easy time. So this guy right here is the leader of the communists in the North. Um, and this is, his name is Ho Chi Minh. Uh, and Ho Chi Minh is a um, really smart guy. Uh, and he's a brilliant leader. The people respect him, and uh, the northern uh, Vietnamese follow him. And so much so that by 1954, which is about nine years after World War II ends, France gives up. So the United States is going to send aid to the south. By aid, we were going to send ammunition, supplies, food, training, um, weapons, that kind of stuff, to the south. Because we don't want the north to win because again, they are communists. We don't want the South then to turn communist. Remember, that's the whole point of the Cold War between the US and the Soviet Union is we don't want any more of this map to turn red and they don't want any more of this map to turn blue. So that's kind of the power struggle back and forth. And as you can see, this Vietnam, um, by the end of the war, spoiler, is going to be red. Uh, and that's what we are trying to avoid. And it just becomes a mess. So we realized by 1964, 1965, that we are um, not going to be able to help the South win unless we send our own troops. So we start sending our own troops. I think it starts off with something like 5,000, which may sound like a lot, but it's actually that's actually a really small number in terms of um, battles. I mean, in terms of troops. But... We send some in 1965, and we just have to start sending more and more. And we think that because we have superior weapons and heavier firepower, that we're just going to go in there and, um, quite frankly, just kick the butts of the Vietnamese. But we do not. Um, we take heavy losses, and we lose a lot of troops. Um, and that's because of the kind of warfare that the Vietnamese fought. The kind of fighting that they do is called guerrilla warfare. Um, and I know that probably makes you think of a, um, a gorilla um, as in the animal, but it um, has nothing to do with that. Uh, the term gorilla, as you see, it's spelled different. Warfare actually means that it's kind of like um, if you ever heard the term ambushing before, where you kind of do sneak attacks, that's what they do. The Vietnamese troops will hide, they'll attack the Americans, and then quickly go back into hiding. And they won't go into a what we would call a fair fight because they realize they won't win a fair fight. And um, honestly, it's pretty smart tactic. 
if you know somebody's got superior weapons and firepower and you know you won't win a fair fight, you don't fight fair. So this is the reason, if you look at this picture, and I'm going to show you a couple more, this is the reason why it was so darn difficult to defeat the Vietnamese. Uh, they, Vietnam is a lot of jungle. Uh, there could be 20, 30 troops hiding somewhere in this jungle in this picture right here, and you would have no idea because it's so dense and thick, it's hard to see them. Um, so, and if people with good camouflage, and if you stay still, it's very hard to detect. So they're able to hide out, and they also, they weren't playing. Remember, this was their land. They knew it better than our troops. Imagine that you grew up um, in the city, and you get sent off to, as an American off to go fight in this jungle. You're not going to be having a good time. And the Vietnamese built these huge tunnels under the ground. This is how um, serious it was, um, where they would be able to uh, do everything. They would cook underground. They have their ammunition. They even had a first aid station. They had all these spikes um, traps set up so Americans would walk over certain areas fall through and cut themselves and uh, get be stuck there so they can go and kill them. Um, and these uh, were all throughout the country and very difficult for us to find. And even if we would find them, they would just move and go to a different one. So they'd be able to get behind our troops, shoot them, and then hide back in their tunnels. Um, the United States in the war, this is a, the war is known a lot for our use of helicopters. It's probably the most, uh, it's really the first war we fought where helicopters had really come along in terms of technology, and we would use them like uh, hundreds of years ago they would use uh, horses. Uh, they even called this like the flying cavalry, which means they would we would have a mission, we'd get on helicopters, we'd go to it, we'd take out the target, hopefully get back on the helicopters and go back to our base. But it didn't always work out that easy. Um, a lot of times, again, we were trying to do something and it was a trap or there's an ambush and the Vietnamese would attack us and they took us by surprise a lot. Um, and we're there for a while. Remember, we started sending troops about 1965. By 1970, the late 60s and by 1970, the war had become very unpopular with the U.S. public. Uh, part of the reason was it wasn't just volunteers that went to war people were drafted. What that means is every um, male, and I believe between the ages of 18 and 25 at the time, was put into a draft where you'd get a number, and if your number was picked, you had to go to war. Um, and there wasn't no choice about it unless you had some kind of health issue or something like that. Um, if you refused, you'd be put in jail. So protests are going to happen along, around the country. A lot of people are like, why in the world are we fighting in this country called Vietnam that I can't even say and don't even know where it is on a map? Um, and two of the most, I'm going to tell you about two of the most um, famous protests. One of them happened at what Kent State University, which is a college in Ohio. Um, interestingly, that's actually where I went to college, and they talk about it a lot there. Um, you could see the Students here are having a protest um, where they're, you know, they got their signs like in this one saying, end the war in Vietnam. Um, and it got so bad, they actually burnt down a building and um, were doing some other things that they called in the National Guard, which is like um, uh, part of the uh, army, technically, our military. So they called them in to try to put, um, stop the protest. Well, unfortunately, somehow, um, one of the troops thought they were given the order to fire into the crowd. And once he did, everyone else started firing into the crowd. Um, and this is one of the most famous pictures um, where this girl um, had discovered that her friend uh, had been shot and killed. Uh, and unfortunately, four people were shot and killed. Um, and here's their, their pictures. And this happened on May 4th, 1970. And I know uh, if you're watching this for the first time, it's probably uh, May 5th that you're watching this. I think I'm going to upload it right on May 4th. Uh, so that would have been about 50 years ago now, because uh, it is May 4th, 19, I mean 2020 right now. So 50 years ago is when this happened. Um, and just a few days later, on May 14th, 
Jackson State University, which is a university in Mississippi, had a similar thing happen where the um, students at that university were protesting the war. Uh, the, the, it wasn't the National Guard, but it was the police were called on them and they fired into this dormitory. You could see the holes here from where they fired with their shotguns at this dorm um, and they actually killed two people and wounded many others. Uh, and this happened, it started on May 14th. Technically, I think it happened after midnight, so it was uh, May 15th, but that's not the point. The point is, um, unfortunately, two people who were protesting lost their lives. Uh, and things like this happen. There's lots of protests around the country. And uh, by um, 1973, or really a little before, even after in the early 1970s, we start pulling our troops out of Vietnam, and we're slowly trying to what we called Vietnam, Vietnamization. It's a hard word to say. We were trying to kind of train the South Vietnamese to fight for themselves, and hopefully the idea was they can fight off the North. Um, and that didn't work um, because by 1975, South Vietnam lost completely and it became a communist country, the whole country. And this is a picture of... Um, 1975, where our helicopters are trying to get the last people we have in Vietnam out of the country before it's completely taken off, taken over by the communists. And this is really embarrassing for the United States. Um, we lost the war um, and we lost it pretty badly too. So what happened is with us, this big, powerful country had lost a war basically to this smaller country. Um, and it was very controversial at the time. People, a lot of people didn't agree. Some people thought that we should never have accepted defeat and send more troops and bomb them and kill them and whatever. And other people were saying we should have never been there in the first place. Uh, we need to get out of there. So people were very against each other. It's kind of similar to, um, if you pay attention today, um, with some things that are going on with the coronavirus, uh, some scary stuff where some people are saying we should do one thing, some people are saying we should do the other, and um, sometimes they can disagree. And that's how it was with the Vietnam War. Uh, people really disagreed about what should be done. So you're gonna have a short reading assignment. I think that's it for Vietnam. Yeah, not short reading, you already did your reading. You're gonna have a short little writing assignment to reflect on this, and that is all we've got for you.